began more than 40 years ago when a young nun of Slavic descent received a call to leave her convent in Calcutta and work amongst the poorest of the poor. Today, Mother Teresa and her missionaries of charity, a small army of sisters, brothers, priests, and volunteers, bring love and caring to hundreds of thousands of sick, hungry, and homeless in 71 countries around the world. Mother Teresa, some say the living saint of Calcutta, believes in a concept that is rooted in a simply stated basic faith. In serving the poorest, we are directly serving God. She and her missionaries teach by example the one essential thing, she says, that God would have us all do about poverty, to share the gifts that we have with those who have not. Winner of the 1979 Nobel Peace Prize for her work with the hundreds of thousands sick, poor, and homeless worldwide, Mother Teresa exemplifies Christian love and is an inspiration to us all.
I would like to introduce Father Michael McKay, University Chaplain and Director of Campus Ministry for the Invocation. In the book, Something Beautiful for God, Mother Teresa has been quoted as saying, once we have learned to see God and his will, our contacts with the poor will become a great sanctity to ourselves and others. And so we have the need to pray. Mother Teresa goes on to say, prayer enlarges the heart until it is capable of containing God's gift of himself. We ask and seek so that our hearts will grow big enough to receive the Lord and to tell everyone that God has sent us to give good news to the poor, to tell prisoners that they are prisoners no more, to tell blind people that they can see, and to set the downtrodden free, and to go tell everyone the news that the kingdom of God has come. Let us now pray together by responding to each petition with the words, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Let us pray for the poor, for those afflicted by exploitation, corruption, poverty, and disease, that God will liberate his people through the compassionate outreach of service to one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Let us pray for peace, especially for those who suffer from tyranny and terrorism, from violence and hatred, that God will extinguish in our hearts all anger and lust for power, and enable us to work for peace based on a genuine love for all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Let us pray for those who are unwanted or forgotten, for those who are uncared for or are dying without notice, that these may find comfort and the consolation in the conscious concern and renewed commitment we demonstrate for every human being as a child of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Let us pray for family and for those who seek a home or shelter in family love and support that people everywhere, especially the children, will be cared for and nourished and clothed through the support for family life and through the bonding of human community and faithful love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray to the of your peace. Let us pray for those who suffer from prejudice or lack of opportunity, for those whose race, creed, or sex leaves them disadvantaged or deprived of the dignity and equality due to all human people. That God will restore justice as the measure of our relationships. We pray to the Lord. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Let us pray for religious unity and for an end to the division of faith traditions which too narrowly define and limit God, who transcends national or cultural or denominational barriers, that our particular religious backgrounds may be a cause for true communion with God and our fellow human beings. We pray to the Lord, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Let us pray for Mother Teresa and her co-workers that their service of the poorest of the poor may continue to be a living example and an encouragement for all who dedicate their lives to gospel values and selfless love for others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. 
Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, unity. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is error, truth. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is sadness, joy. And where there is darkness, light. O Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I will introduce several distinguished guests who are here in honor of Mother Teresa. Please hold your applause until all names are read. Bishop Leo T. Maher, Bishop of San Diego. San Diego Mayor Maureen O'Connor. Dr. Anita Figueredo and her husband, Dr. William Doyle. In our audience today, we have Sister Sylvia, Superior of the San Francisco Missionaries of Charity, and Father Joseph, Superior of the Missionaries of Charity in New York. The University of San Diego is honored to welcome Mother Teresa to our campus. This Catholic university educates women and men to use their minds, their hearts, their diverse talents in the service of their God, their brothers and sisters, their country. USD is committed to volunteerism as a significant component of students' education. Prominent among the learning experiences in which USD students participate are opportunities to volunteer in the service of those who have less. USD's Director of Volunteer Resources, Mrs. Judy Rahner, will briefly describe the scope of student involvement in helping others. Mother Teresa, your total giving is an inspiration to our students who are committed to serving God through community service. Throughout the school year, USD students volunteer as adult literacy tutors, as builders of homes for the needy in Tijuana, as mentors for at-risk junior high students, as referees and buddies for disabled athletes in the Special Olympics, as tutors in Southeast San Diego and partnership schools, as friends to the lonely and sick senior citizens, as servers in the Catholic Workers Soup Kitchen, as interns and student teachers preparing for service careers, and in many other ways. During this past school year, approximately 1,600 of our USD students volunteered to give tens of thousands of hours of their time to community service. This would not be possible without the student leaders who coordinate USD community service and administration and faculty who support this involvement. Moreover, this would not be possible without our friends in the community who teach our students about the bigger world. I'm pleased to welcome a number of our community friends who are in the audience today including children from VA Haas Indian Reservation, the children from Southeast San Diego Tutoring Project, and one of our partnership schools, Holy Family of Linda Vista. You and your missionaries and co-workers present today will further inspire us to expand our volunteer work. Thank you. I would like to introduce Dr. Anita Figueredo, member of the Board of Trustees of the University of San Diego and regional link of the co-workers of Mother Teresa.
Thank you. This is more to enable me to see you than to enable you to see me. And that's a real treat, I want to tell you. This is a beautiful gathering. Of course, our day and our, our life and our joy is really fulfilled today to have with us Mother Teresa, who is an example to everyone in the world and has been an example to many of us for many years. I hardly know where to begin. This is supposed to be some sort of introduction, but how do you introduce Mother Teresa? In the first place, she doesn't like biographical notes. She says they're of no consequence. And uh, so to tell you where she was born and, and what she did as a youngster and et cetera is of no consequence. I can tell you that Mother Teresa saw the poverty around her and decided that she, one person, must do something about it. It was an unlikely uh, venture. There was no way that one person was going to be able to go out into the slums of Calcutta, which was at that time the worst slum in the world, and be able to effect a change. Any of us, any sensible person, mother is not sensible, she's endowed. <laughs> any of us would have known that it was a nice thought, but what can one person do? But mother doesn't think that way, and she's teaching the rest of us not to think that way. She resolved to leave her secure, very holy position as a nun teaching in a convent and to go out into the slums with five rupees in her pocket, and a rupee is not very much, as her only possessions and try to help the poor. She simply set about to do it, and she attracted other people, mostly her students at first, who came to join her in her work. And gradually, thousands of people, some to commit their lives, as the missionaries of charity we have here have done, commit their lives to work for the poor and to imitate mother in her concern. Th there are brothers here. I haven't seen them. Where are they? They were... Are you around, brothers? Oh, I hope they didn't have to stay out because they're... Where are they? Well, anyway... <laughs> oh, there they are in the back. A typical place. For <laughs> I don't... I don't think Mother knew they were here. They came from Los Angeles to see Mother today, and they do things very quietly. And the, the, uh, now the fathers who are setting about to do the same thing. And then in addition, there are almost 3,000, or are there more than 3,000 of your brothers and sisters, Mother? How many? Mother says thousands. <laughs> 3,000 or more, and, and tomorrow it'll be, you know, that plus some more. It, you can't keep up with this story. And in addition to that, to these people who are committing their lives to following God and serving God according to Mother's interpretation and direction, there are also co-workers all over the world, and many of you here are co-workers. And we are just ordinary lay people without really a vision of our own, but who have the good sense to recognize a good vision when we hear of it, and who have learned to see God in our fellow men, to remember that Jesus himself said, when I was hungry, you fed me, and when I was thirsty, you gave me to drink, and when I was naked, you clothed me, and you took me in, and so on. And when, then he was asked, when did we see thee, Lord? 
that you were hungry or thirsty or naked because they didn't remember having seen God in any of these conditions. And Jesus answered, in so far as you did it to the least of my brothers, you did it to me. And mother says, he didn't say, it's as if you had done it to me. He says, you did it to me. And so out there, in everyone who is needy, is Jesus in a distressing disguise. And we, every one of us here, can learn to see in everyone else and in ourselves, Jesus in one distressing disguise or another. And then we will be following Mother Teresa in our road to salvation. And I present to you Mother Teresa. University of San Diego is pleased to confer upon Mother Teresa the honorary doctorate. Will Bishop Maher please escort Mother Teresa to the lectern while the citation is read? Citation for honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. A significant aspect of the University of San Diego's educational mission is to foster the work of God by recognizing those who have dedicated their lives to God's service in special ways. In honoring Mother Teresa this afternoon, the University of San Diego is proud to make known the beauty of her work as an inspiration to each of us to commit ourselves to loving God in the poor. God's early call took Mother Teresa, who was born of Albanian parentage in what is now Yugoslavia, first to Dublin, then to Calcutta, India, where she taught in the schools of her congregation, the Sisters of Loreto. After school, she would often go among the neighboring slum dwellers to alleviate their hunger and disease. In 1946, while on a train, she tells us, Mother Teresa heard her second call, I was to leave the convent and help the poor whilst living among them. She began by responding to needs around her, was joined by others, and in 1950, the Missionaries of Charity formally began. Today, less than 40 years later, some 3,000 sisters, 400 brothers, and a group of priests serve the poorest of the poor in over 80 countries around the world. They minister to several hundred thousand lepers, feed tens of thousands in soup kitchens, seek out the sick and elderly who live alone, run homes for the dying destitute and AIDS hospices, work with alcohol and drug abusers, serve in schools for the poor and in hundreds of mobile medical clinics, and handle adoption placements for abandoned infants and children. In honoring Mother Teresa, the University of San Diego honors God who has gifted her with insights which animate her life and work. Her choice of ministries, she says, is always according to the needs. She sees a basic need and begins to address the need directly, simply, with what there is. She and those with her trust and God provides the resources. The only thing that can remove poverty, she says, is sharing. Jesus came among the poorest to teach people to love one another, which is to share, to use the gifts that God has given to people who have, to share with those who have not. Her mission is to love persons, she says, not to deal with institutions. Asked by an interviewer last year why her missionaries of charity are in first world countries, Mother Teresa's intense response is, there are hungry people everywhere. They have soup kitchens in New York, London, Canada. But poverty is not just being without food, 
It is the absence of love. Often in big cities, big countries, people simply die of loneliness, unwanted, unloved, forgotten, especially the drunkards and drug addicts. This is a much more bitter poverty than the poverty not to have food. The more government does, the better, she has said. But she and the sisters offer something else, Christian love and care. Mother Teresa has made plain to all the world her reverence for life, her passionate opposition to abortion. Every child, she says, has been created for greater things, to love and be loved in the image of God. She and her sisters fight abortion with adoption. In 1969, the International Association of Co-workers of Mother Teresa was affiliated to the Missionaries of Charity as an organization of men, women, and children who seek to love God and their fellow humans through wholehearted free service to the poorest of the poor of all creeds and castes. She asks her co-workers to find the poor in their own neighborhoods, especially the poor who are hidden and unknown. In 1979, the world looked more deeply into the significance of the word peace when the Swedish Academy awarded the Nobel Peace Prize to Mother Teresa. The University of San Diego is particularly privileged to honor Mother Teresa for exemplifying to the world that there will be peace when we live by her conviction that God is love in action and that in serving the poorest we are directly serving God in recognition of the gift God has given her to witness to the world that God is love in action the University of San Diego is proud to confer upon Mother Teresa the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters honoris causa. The mayor of San Diego, Maureen O'Connor, will welcome Mother Teresa to the city of San Diego. I was asked to present Mother Teresa with the keys to the city of San Diego, but I thought But I thought, what does Mother Teresa want with the keys to the city when she already holds the keys to heaven? <laughs> then I thought, perhaps we could trade. her keys for my keys. <laughs> Finally, I thought about when I last saw Mother Teresa, 28 years ago. I was a student at Rosary High School, and the nuns let us out of class for an assembly to listen to another nun from India. Not many high school students can boast of having been trained by teachers whose appreciation of Mother Teresa was 20 years ahead of the Nobel Prize Committee. Those nuns, the Sisters of St. Joseph of Orange, gave my own mother a present those 20 odd years ago, and she wishes me to give it to Mother Teresa today, the Holy Rosary, a small token in memory of our school, our nuns, our mothers. 
So from my mother to you, Mother Teresa, may I present the sacramental symbol of our Blessed Mother, a rosary blessed by Pope John the 23rd, and may I ask that you remember San Diego in your prayers. Welcome Mother Teresa, who will now speak to us. Let us thank God for his great love in bringing us together and giving us such beautiful weather. Let us ask Our Lady to give us her heart so beautiful, so pure, so immaculate, so full of love and humility that we may be able to receive Jesus in the bread of life, love him as she loved him, and serve him in the distressing disguise of the poorest of the poor. We read in the gospel that God loved the world so much that he gave Jesus to the most pure Virgin Mary. And she, on receiving Jesus, went in haste to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who was with her child. And today we are keeping that feast, visitation. And something very beautiful about this feast, she, full of grace, and Jesus in her, she goes to share the joy of loving in just doing the humble work of a servant in the house of her cousin Elizabeth. What the presence of Jesus in her has brought into her the joy of loving and putting that love into a living action by doing humble work with great love. And something very, very strange happened when she came into the house of Elizabeth. The little unborn child in the womb of his mother, lived with joy. Strange that God used an unborn child to proclaim the coming of Christ. And we know what terrible things is happening to the little unborn child, how the mother herself kills her own child. And how abortion has become the greatest destroyer of peace because it destroys two lives, the life of the child and the conscience of mother. That little child born created to love and to be loved for greater things, destroyed by its own mother. Let us for one second, in silence, thank our parents for wanting us 
for loving us, for giving us the joy of living. For we too, if they had aborted us, we would not be here today. Jesus came to give us the good news that God is love and that he loves you and he loves me and he wants us to love one another as he loves each one of us. There's something very beautiful in the scripture that says even if mother could forget her child, I will not forget you. I have carved you on the palm of my hand. You are precious to me. I love you. Remember that you are precious to God himself. How precious you are to him. I will give you a most wonderful example that I experienced of the greatness and tenderness of God's love. A man came to our house and he told me, my only child is dying. And the doctor has prescribed this medicine. In India, we cannot get it. It has to be brought from England. I have permission to bring life-saving medicine from anywhere at any time with the permission of government. As we were talking, a man came with a basket of medicine, half-used medicines. They go around and pick up from the families and they bring to us and we give to the poor. And Right on the top of that medicine was that medicine. If it was inside, I would not have seen it. If it had come before or after, I would not have connected. But just at that time, and right on the top, I stood in front of that medicine, in that basket, and I was thinking, millions and millions and millions of children in the world, in God's cons tender concern for the little child in the slums of Calcutta, to send the man just at that time, to put the medicine right up for me to see. And when I counted, it was exactly the number the doctor had prescribed. What tenderness of God's tender love for that little child. And he has the same love for each one of you here and everywhere. For we have been created for greater things, to love and to be loved. That is why Jesus insisted so much in teaching us how to love one another and to make it easy for us to love one another. He said, whatever you do to the least of my brethren, you do it to me. If you give a glass of water in my name, you give it to me. If you receive a little child in my name, you receive me. And still more, when we die and go home to God, again, it will be the same tender way God will judge us. And will say, I was hungry and you gave me to eat. Hunger today is not only for bread. Hunger today is for love. To be somebody to somebody. 
I was naked and you clothed me. Not only naked for a piece of cloth, but the loss of that beautiful gift of God, purity, that human dignity. I was homeless and you took me in. Not only homeless for not having a home made of bricks, but unwanted, unloved, a trophy of society. You took me in, you loved me. Come, you blessed of my father, and possess the kingdom that is prepared for you from all eternity. Because I was hungry, you gave me to eat. I was naked, you clothed me. I was homeless, you took me in. Where does this love begin? In our own home, in our own family. How does it begin? By praying together. Family that prays together stays together. And if you stay together, you will love one another as God loves each one of you. Therefore, let us thank God for his great love in making it so beautiful, so easy to love one another. Because in loving each other, we love him. But what a wonderful encouragement for all of us. And we have no reason to despair, to be unhappy, because we are loved by him, who is the love eternal. And so teach your children to pray, and pray with them. Bring prayer, bring our lady in your family. Pray the rosary together, and you will see the joy and the love and the peace that comes in the life of everyone that live together. I will pray for you that you may grow in the love of God to this love for one another. Share the joy of loving with each other. I never forget one day two young people came to our house and they gave me lots of money and I asked them where did you get so much money? And they said Two days ago we got married, but before marriage we decided we will not buy wedding clothes, we will not have wedding feast, we will give you the money. And I asked, in our country in India, that's a very big sacrifice. So I asked them, why did you do that? And they said, we loved each other so tenderly that we wanted to share the joy of loving with the people you serve. Have you experienced the joy of loving by sharing until it hurts? Or is it just if you give out of your abundance, you don't feel that sharing, so give until it hurts. And this is the joy of loving. Few days ago, a man came to our house and he told me, there is a family dying of hunger, with six children. They have not eaten for some time. Do something for them. And I took whatever there was in the house and I went. And I saw the little children's faces dried up, looking miserable, because hunger is a terrible suffering. And then I thought that she will take the food and make the children sit and eat with them. But no, she took the food from my hands. She divided the food and she went out. When she came back, I asked her, where did you go? What did you do? And she said, they are hungry also. I was not surprised that she gave, but I was very much surprised that she knew 
and she had the courage and the love and the joy of sharing, giving to them before her own children. See, this is love in action. Works of love are always works of peace, of joy, of unity. And prayer gives us that joy, because prayer gives us a clean heart. And a clean heart can see God, because the fruit of prayer is the deepening of faith. And the fruit of faith is love. And the fruit of love is service. And the fruit of service is peace. See, all that is connected together. And so let us learn to pray. And look at the cross. And you will understand how Jesus loved you, me, each one of us. But when you look at the tabernacle, you know how much Jesus loves you now. And so ask your parish priest to give you the joy of the hour of adoration, at least once a week, be alone with Jesus. Allow him to love you, and you love him in return with a tender love. For you are precious to him. He loves you. I will pray for you that you may grow in holiness through this love for one another. And you also pray for us that we may continue God's work with great love. I also want to thank the parents who have been so generous in giving their sons to be priests of God and their daughters to be consecrated virgins. Because I feel this is the greatest gift of God to a family, to have a priest's son, to have a daughter consecrated virgin. May God's blessing be with you all. God bless you. Mother Teresa, we have a few gifts for you. Thank you to all here present for sharing this afternoon with us. Please remain seated until Mother Teresa has left the stadium and the campus. The children here in front could sit down, please. Please join in the prayer of the co-workers of Mother Teresa, which is printed on page two of your program. I'll give you a moment to find it. Page two of your program. Join all together. Make us worthy, Lord, to serve our fellow men throughout the world who live and die in poverty and hunger. Give them through our hands this day their daily bread and by our understanding and love, give peace and joy. 
Lord, make me a channel of thy peace, that where there is hatred, I may bring love, that where there is wrong, I may bring the spirit of forgiveness, that where there is error, I may bring truth, that where there is despair, I may bring hope, that where there are shadows, I may bring light, that where there is sadness, I may bring joy. Lord, grant that I may seek rather to comfort than to be comforted, to understand than to be understood, to love than to be loved. For it is by forgetting self that one finds, it is by dying that one awakens to eternal life. Amen. A special word of thanks to the Christ the King Choir.
us ask our lady to give us her heart so beautiful so pure vamos a pedir a nuestra señora que nos dé su corazón tan bello y tan puro we may be able to love jesus as she loved him que podamos amar a jesus como él lo ama a él and serve him in the distressing disguise of the poor y que lo ayudemos por medio del pobre let us thank god for his great love vamos a pararnos todos por su gran amor in bringing us together para unirnos todos to show our love for him para mostrar nuestro amor hacia él Let us thank him for making us his own children. Vamos a darle las gracias a él por hacernos sus hijos. For making us the joy and the love and peace of each other. Por hacernos el amor, la paz y el cariño de cada uno. For we read in the gospel that God loved the world so much. Porque leemos en la palabra de Dios que Dios amó al mundo tanto. That he gave Jesus to the most pure Virgin Mary. Que le dio a Jesús por medio de Jesús a la Virgen María. And she, on receiving Jesus, went in haste. Y ella al recibir a Jesús, to serve her cousin Elizabeth. Fue a sirviendo a su prima Elizabeth. Who was with the child. Que estaba encinta. Something very strange happened when she came in the house of Elizabeth. Cuando ella entró a la casa de Elizabeth, algo muy extraño sucedió. The little unborn child in the womb of his mother leaped with joy. El pequeño niño que estaba en el vientre de la madre que todavía no nacía se movió de gusto. Very strange. Algo muy extraño. That God used an unborn child que Dios haya usado a un niño todavía no nacido to proclaim the coming of Christ para proclamar la venida de Jesucristo and we know what terrible things are happening to the unborn child today y nosotros sabemos las cosas terribles que les pasan a los niños no nacidos en estos días how the mother herself kills her own child como la madre misma mata a su propio hijo through abortion por medio del aborto abortion has become the greatest destroyer of peace el aborto se ha vuelto el destructor más grande de la paz for it kills the child porque mata al bebé and also the conscience of the mother y también a la conciencia de la madre So let us thank our parents for loving us. Así es que vamos a darle las gracias a nuestros padres por habernos amado. For giving us the joy of living. Por habernos dado la gracia de vivir. For you and I would not be here today. Ya que si no hubiese sido así, ustedes y yo no estaríamos aquí hoy. If our mother had aborted us si nuestra madre nos hubiera abortado. Let us thank God for his great love for us. Vamos a darle las gracias a Dios por su gran amor a nosotros. And often during the day, y a menudo durante el día, say, digan, Jesus in my heart, Jesús dentro de mi corazón, I believe in your tender love for me. Yo creo en tu cariño hacia mí. I love you. Yo te amo. Jesus came to give us the good news. Jesús vino a darnos las buenas noticias. That God is love. De que Dios es amado. And that he loves us. De que Dios es amor y que él nos ama a nosotros. And that he wants us to love one another as he loves each one of us. Y que quiere que nos amemos los unos a los otros como él nos ama a nosotros. Where does this love begin? ¿Dónde empieza este amor? In our own family. Dentro de nuestra propia familia. How does it begin? ¿Cómo comienza? 
by praying together. Rezando juntos. Family that prays together stays together. Una familia que reza juntas permanece unida. And if we stay together, you love one another as God loves each one of you. Y si permanecen unidos, entonces se amarán entre ustedes mismos como Dios nos ama a nosotros. To make it easy for us to love one another, para que sea más fácil para nosotros amarnos, Jesús dijo. Whatever you do to the least of my brethren, lo que hagas tú a mi hermano, you do it to me. Eso me haces tú a mí. If you give a glass of water in my name, si tú das un vaso de agua a mi nombre, you give it to me. Me lo estás dando a mí. If you receive a little child in my name, si tú recibes un pequeño bebé a mi nombre, you receive me. Me estás recibiendo a mí. And one day when we die and go home to God, y un día cuando muramos y vayamos a casa con Dios, again Jesus is going to judge us on the same way. Una vez más Jesús nos va a juzgar de la misma manera. He will say, Él dirá, I was hungry and you gave me to eat. Yo tenía hambre y tú me diste de comer. I was naked and you clothed me. Yo me vi desnudo y tú me vestiste. I was homeless and you took me in. Yo no tenía un hogar y tú me recibiste en el tuyo. Come, you blessed of my father. Ven, tú eres bendito por mi Padre. And possess the kingdom prepared for you. Y el reino estará preparado para ti. So love for one another prepares us to go home to God. Así es que el amor del uno hacia el otro nos prepara para ir al hogar de Dios. And for all eternity, you love one another in the same divine love. Y durante toda la eternidad nos amaremos con ese mismo amor divino. See, Jesus made himself bread of life. Ven, Jesús se hizo el pan de la vida. To give us life. Para darnos la vida. And in giving us life, he gave us his love. Y al darnos la vida, él nos dio su amor. So ask your parish priest. Así es que pidan a sus párrocos. To give you the joy of adoration. Que le dé la alegría de la adoración. At least once a week. Por lo menos una vez a la semana. When you can be alone with Jesus. Cuando ustedes te, tengan la capacidad de estar solos con Jesucristo. Because if we look at the cross, porque si nosotros vemos a la cruz, we know how much Jesus loved us. Nosotros podemos ver cómo Jesús nos amó. But when we look at the tabernacle, pero cuando vemos el tabernáculo, we know how much he loves us now. Nosotros podemos saber cuánto nos ama él ahora. So go to Jesus, for he loves you tenderly. Así es que vaya con Jesús porque los ama con ternura. In time of suffering and pain, go to Jesus. Durante el dolor y el sufrimiento, vaya con Jesucristo. And who will help you to love Jesus with a tender love? Mary. Y quién los va a ayudar a ustedes a amar a Jesús con un amor tierno, María. Mary, the mother of Jesus, who loves us very much. María, la madre de Jesús que nos ama mucho. Because she knows and she wants us to love her son very much. Porque ella nos conoce y ella quiere que nosotros amemos a su hijo mucho. I want to thank the families who have been so generous in giving their children to God. Yo quiero darle las gracias a las familias que han sido tan generosas al entregar sus hijos a Dios. For it's such a great blessing to have a son priest. Ya que es una gran bendición el tener un hijo sacerdote. To have a daughter consecrated virgin. El tener una hija consagrada virgen. I will pray for you. Yo rezaré por ustedes. That through this love for one another, que por medio de este amor de uno hacia el otro, you will grow in holiness. Ustedes crecerán dentro de la bendición. You also pray for us. Ustedes también recen por nosotros. That we may continue God's work with great love. Que podamos continuar el trabajo de Dios con mucho amor. 
I don't have gold and silver to give you. Yo no tengo oro y plata para darles a ustedes. But I'm giving you my sisters and the father. Pero les estoy dando mis hermanas y los sacerdotes. And together with Gracias. 